I am glad that in God's word, he gives us people's lives that we can learn from. And there's a tremendous example found in Acts chapter 4 that has just held onto my heart for many years after I learned about him. Listen to these words in Acts 4, 30, 36. And Joseph, who was also named Barnabas by the apostles, which is translated son of encouragement. I'm thankful that as we look into the life of Barnabas, we learn what did it take to be a son of encouragement. In his example, we see two experiences from his life that we can use for our lives to become a son of encouragement. First off, we notice that he shared. In verse 37, as it talks about Barnabas, it said he had land and he sold it and he took the money and shared it with the apostles to use any way they wanted. Uh, that was the common custom at that time because in verse 32, it says, now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that the anything they possessed was his own, but they shared everything in common. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. It's interesting, when they humbly helped each other, God worked in wonderful ways and they experienced great grace, mega grace. Nor was there any among them that lacked, and all who possessed lands and houses sold them and brought them the proceeds of the things that were sold, and laid them at the apostles' feet, and they distributed them to anyone as they had need. Isn't it wonderful that there was such a unity and spirit of encouragement in the early church, and God was working in a wonderful way? It's because people shared. People shared. I'm glad as I look at this, my mind goes back to six years ago. And I remember Jerry Harris, and I think it might have been in a prepare to care graduation service, that he said, you see a need, you meet a need. That stuck in my heart in a strong way. And ever since then, I've allowed that to guide me in my ministry here at the Western Home. It's the same thing we saw Jesus doing when he was on earth. Matter of fact, Acts 10 says that he did that. And as I think of those things, that's why I'm so glad that I've had people in my life that saw needs and helped me. I'm thankful that way back in 1991, that a brother in the Lord invited me to a Great Little Church Growth Conference. He turns 75 tomorrow. But I look back with great delight on the fact that that conference, he gave me a book that I've read probably at least once, if not twice, sometimes three times a year. He shared with me a book that was a tremendous blessing to him called Born for Battle. And if you will want to learn how to pray, get a hold of this book. I'm thankful that he shared blessings with me. I'm so glad that he also knew that the church I was in paid me $100 a week and uh, that I had seven kids and one on the way. And he often would send me pizza and ice cream money that might encourage my kids. He's been a Barnabas to me for years, and I'm so glad that he came into my life, and I'm so glad that he led another gentleman to the Lord that I'll tell you about here in just a minute. But not only did he share, he cared. Let's go back to Acts chapter 9 and see what happens. In verse 26, And when Saul came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were afraid of him and did not believe that he was a disciple. You want to know why they were afraid? Verse 1 says, Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from them. He was headed to destroy the church. He believed the havoc he was reaching because of his religious roots was exactly what his God wanted him to do. And we have to realize religion will wreak havoc. And I'm so glad that he went from a religion that was demanding loyalty to meeting the Lord Jesus Christ personally and trusting him as Savior and learned that Christianity is not a religion but a tremendous relationship. 
But people still doubted that. They'd heard his testimony of all that he'd done to the church. And so they were skeptical of him. Of him. But praise the Lord, Barnabas was there. Verse 27, But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. And he declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road. He said, Hey, Paul has trusted Christ. And he spoke to him and how he preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. I'm glad that Barnabas cared enough to help this young disciple out who others were rejecting. One of the sad things so often we see in Christianity even is how we're skeptical of what God has done in someone's life when we know their past. I'm thankful that it goes on to say though, so he was with them in Jerusalem, coming in and going out, and he spoke boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus, and he disputed against the Hellenists, but they attempted to kill him. That's what happens when you really live for Christ. Uh, people want to get rid of you. They don't like you. When the brethren found out, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him to Tarshish. They, they got him out of the danger situation. But I'm so glad that Barnabas cared enough to get him in where he could be discipled. Then we look in Acts chapter 11 and verse 28. This is how God is working in the lives of the apostles there and the verse 21 excuse me and the hand of the Lord was with them and a great number believed and turned to the Lord that's how anyone comes to the Lord his hand has to work in their lives and they believe the essential element in eternal life the only way we can have that hope of heaven is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and that was happening and then the news of these things came to the church in Jerusalem and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. Check it out, Barnabas. You know, they knew they could trust him to go and find out what was happening. When he came and he'd seen the grace of God, it's wonderful to look for the grace of God. Grace is God's riches at Christ's expense or God doing for me what I can't do or God giving to me uh, when he wants to. And he went and he saw the grace of God. He, saw the hand, he heard of the hand of God and saw the grace of God. And he was glad and he encouraged them all with purpose of heart to continue with the Lord. Stay right there, son of encouragement, just showing how he cared. And he was a good man, full of the Holy Ghost and faith. And a great many people were added to the Lord. God's continuing to work. He will always use any man that is a good man. And if you believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, you'll be good because you're seeing the fact that God is good. And then a man of faith, forsaking all, I trust him, living by faith and doing what God wants. And people came to Christ. Then Barnabas departed from Tarshish to seek for Saul. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. In other words, he saw the work going on, knew he couldn't do it himself, and knew that Saul needed somewhere to serve, and God led him to go there to do that and bring him to serve. Well, as we look at these things, it reminds me of probably my favorite verse in the book of Isaiah that's helped me have guidelines of how to become a Barnabas. In Isaiah 41 and verse 6, it says... And everyone helped his neighbor, and everyone said to his brother, be of good courage. Let's think about that. For you and I to become a Barnabas, we need to assist your neighbor. Assist your neighbor. I am blessed with that. I am blessed with the neighborhood of people that care for me. I'm glad that when we do get those big snows, I have a neighbor that has a nice big snowblower. And I'll never forget one morning I heard this big snowblower and sound like it's outside my house. I go out there and lo and behold, my neighbor is doing my sidewalks with his little girl with a shovel and she's going behind daddy and getting what he misses. As he got up to my driveway, I stopped him to speak to him and I said, hey, you're training them right. He said, sure am. I said, I deeply appreciate you doing this. Now, I didn't understand the next statement wholly. Maybe you do. He said, well, when I get old, I hope someone does it for me. I had to think through that one. But I'm thankful that he is one of five 
that would help me with my snow. Now that's a good neighbor. But I realize for someone to be a good neighbor, we have to realize who is my neighbor? Have you heard that question from the New Testament when someone was tempting Jesus? And basically the parable of the Good Samaritan says, a neighbor is anybody that has a need. And my mind went back to, oh yeah, what did Jerry Harris teach me? See a need, meet a need. How do you do that? You do it the same way Jesus did. He went about doing good. And it's interesting that in Isaiah 41.10, it says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will help you. I'm glad today that God wants to help us. Help stands for his eternal love provided. And as we find in Hebrews 4, one of the greatest ways we can help anyone is through prayer. I'm so thankful for those of you that support this chaplain team through prayer and tell me that you pray for me. I'm so glad for that. I'm glad for when Christy went through her cancer the second time. So many of the, the team was behind us in prayer and residents praying for us and staff praying for us. One of the greatest ways you can help anyone is through prayer. It's the golden key of opportunity that allows you to be just like Jesus because he is ever living to pray for us. And any time you can help someone through prayer, don't miss the greatest opportunity to be a blessing that you can be to someone who needs your help. I'm thankful also that uh, something that encouraged me was uh, as we were going through a time at Burton Avenue Baptist Church, we got broken into. But what God did for me before that happened was allow me to read a book by Nancy Lee DeMoss on the attitude of gratitude. It, and just that week, I came across this statement, and it's so true. Gratitude is my life preserver. It rescues me from myself and my runaway emotions. It buoys me on the grace of God and keeps me from drowning in my natural bent toward doubt, discouragement, and anxiety. I'm so thankful that not only can we assist your neighbor, we can affirm your neighbor. And I think today one of the greatest ways to affirm a neighbor is gratitude. You know, gratitude is the idea of being gracious. I see God doing that in Joshua 1. As Joshua is stepping into the great big shoes of Moses, and God says, I have a great big job for you. And God is wanting to affirm him. And he says, in the same way I was with Moses, I will be with you. He affirms Joshua saying, you have my presence. You have my promise. Aren't we glad today that we have the promises of God? Especially the one, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But he wants to encourage Joshua. And in three verses, he says the same thing. He says, be strong and of good courage. Strong there has the idea to hold on to. And I think he's saying, Joshua, hold on to the fact that you have my presence. You have my promises. Hold on to that reality. And for you and I to be strong, we have to hold on tight to the precious word of God that teaches us all about the fact that God is with us and God will bless us. But it says, be strong and of good courage. Uh, the idea is don't give up. Don't give up. That's why I like the word encourage because it basically is the idea of put courage in. And for us to be like Barnabas, you and I have to make sure we assist our neighbors. Who's your neighbor? Jesus said anyone who has a need. And just remember prayer is one of the greatest ways to do that. And you add some scripture that has helped you and that will help them too. And affirm your brother. Who's your brother? Well, in the New Testament, we find out, as Jesus said, your brother is anyone who knows him as Savior and follows him. And I'm thankful today to have a lot of people who have assisted me and affirmed me, especially on our team. Let's pray. Father, thank you today that we have a Savior that loves us and cares for us. May we just be the same with those around us. May we assist them in prayer and affirm them with your promises. 
In Jesus' name, amen.